very clear about what you're trying to accomplish and knowing your niche and staying consistent because if you jump around, you're just going to get frustrated and not really accomplish anything and lose your audience along the way. So in a world that can be very noisy, figure out what it is that you are doing, the audience that you want to go after or the audience that you're in and just stay there. No matter what's happening, stay there. Do you want to learn effective ways to build relationships, generate sales, and grow your business from successful entrepreneurs, startups, and CEOs without listening to a long, long, long interview? If so, you've come to the right place. Gresham Harkless values your time and is ready to share with you precisely the information you're in search of. This is the I Am CEO Podcast. Hello, hello, hello. This is Gresh from the I Am CEO podcast. I have a very special guest on the show today. I have Angelina Rosario of SheFixesCrowns.com. Angelina, super excited to have you on the show. So excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, it should be a great time. And before we jumped into that interview, I want to read a little bit more about Angelina so you can hear about some of those awesome things. And Angelina's motto is turn pain into purpose. While leading the sales department in one of the top media markets in the country, she was diagnosed with a disfiguring, fast-growing tumor in her face the size of a baseball. As a result, she underwent four major surgeries, removing five teeth, a nerve, and a bone from her right hip, which left her barely walking or talking. She created the 5 by 5 success habits to achieve a complete recovery, a true testimony that even extreme adversity can be turned into victory. Since then, she has, tur- she has influenced thousands of people by teaching them that applying this method to trials, setbacks, and fears is a secret weapon to overcome any challenge in becoming the best version of themselves. Themselves. Angelina implements these strategies throughout all her activities as a sales leader, certified ICF coach, author, speaker, and entrepreneur, and super excited to hear about it on the show today. Angelina, are you ready to speak to the IMCO community? Yes, I am. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, that bio sounds way, way better from your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I, it's probably even better when you're doing it. You do all the hard work. I just get to read it out. So I, I imagine it. I got the easy end of the stick. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So I, I know I touched on it when I read your bio a little bit, but I wanted to rewind the clock, hear a little bit more about your CEO story. We'll let you get started with all the awesome work you're doing. Yeah, yeah. It was actually, I mean, going back to the bio, it really is where my story started. I was diagnosed with a tumor. It was the size of a baseball. And that left me really contemplating my entire life and my purpose, right? And why am I here? And so one specific day in ICU, I really didn't have anything left in me, no more energy. My positivity had dwindled. Everything just seemed to have been going just backwards for me. And I asked, you know, the creator of the universe, I call it God, you can call it whatever you want. I said, if you can help me do this, if I, if you can work out a miracle, I promise to devote my life and helping others do the same. And uh, miracles after miracles did happen to the point that they used my case as a study And um, with that being said, I created She Fixes Crowns in 2017, where I've been able to, you know, just share the five by five success stories, a lot of the coaching that I've learned along the way to help others really just overcome challenges and use it for a purpose. It's really just teaching others how to discover their purpose here on earth. And uh, I appreciate you sharing your story and, and, you know, all the sometimes like behind the scenes things, a lot of times you see people, they, they become successful, you know, they do all these awesome things. You don't sometimes see those dark moments. And um, I appreciate you so much in sharing that because I think we don't, really sometimes hear the entire journey of somebody's success. We only see that side. We don't necessarily see the th- side that wasn't as much success, but it ends up being like, if that didn't happen, a lot of times it, it propels us into where we ultimately should be. Absolutely. This is why I say don't hate on anyone's path because you had no idea what kind of fire they had to go through. And usually with a lot of success, because a lot of challenges that wasn't expected, it could be in any aspect of your life, Right. So I am a firm believer just, hey, you know, celebrate those wins that other people are other people are having. And yeah, because I know I wouldn't be who I am today. She Fixes Crown definitely would have never been created. I've never would have been an author. None of it would have happened if it wasn't for that for that challenging season in my life. 
Absolutely. It, it reminds me so much of this quote, um, you know, it's always darkest before dawn. And I, it kind of yeah. sounds like that could be like a, I guess, a, a little brother, a little sister to the five by five method, just because it's the ability to understand that those difficulties, those challenges sometimes have pearls of wisdom and maybe even opportunity with them. Yeah, yeah. Well, the five by five, I mean, it was again in ICU. I was left without being able to talk or walk. So I just started studying, you know, Tony Robbins and uh, Abraham Hicks. I, I started studying a lot of folks that have gone Oprah Winfrey who had had her own share of hell. And so I'm like, what makes these people overcome all these challenges and really create a path that what they've always wanted to do? And not just mediocre, like these people are living life full out. And I just started studying them for hours of hours of hours of time. And the data that I kept getting back was the mindset and how important is the mindset. And the mindset was got, I had to shift it and it's not always easy. And then it wasn't really articulated in very simple jargon. It just sounded either very religious or something way too woo woo and spiritual or something too scientific. I'm like, why are they complicating all of this? And then you had to go to all these types of resources to really try to put your own story together and figure out what works for you. And I'm like, I'm going to simplify this process and I'm going to call it a five by five success habits. And I figured out if I woke up early in the morning and I didn't prime my mind, it was a downward spiral for me because it will control my entire day. So that's the five by five success habits. You start it early in the morning, as soon as you get up and it's really just five minutes of inspiration. You can call that prayer five minutes of meditation, five minutes of visualization, five minutes of journaling, and five minutes of affirmation. And that alone just kind of just kept my mind. And I realized that when I dare skip a day or I figured I'll do it in the afternoon, I wasn't the nicest person. I was creating these negative narratives in my mindset of the worst scenario because doctors were saying the worst scenario was going to happen. And I had to keep my mind on what I felt that it could happen. Why not? Right. So, and it builds resiliency. That makes so much sense. And I, I definitely, I, I'm envisioning it as kind of like the, the five legs legs of a stool, so to speak, where you need to have, you know, each of those to make sure that you are, you know, setting yourself up for um, success. So I wanted to, di- I did want to drill down a little bit, hear a little bit more on how you're working with serving your clients. Could you take us through a little bit more on what that looks like and how you're making that impact? Yeah, it's either on a one-on-one basis. So that's on one-on-one coaching. I, I also speak on different platforms. So sometimes it's just speaking to the masses. And having them, you know, we, we've I've had a mastermind program. I've done that. I've also just published a book. Well, I guess I didn't just publish a book. I came out with a book about two years ago. Thank you for walking away. So a lot of that, my methods are shared in that book. And I'm just starting to write the five by five that should be done by the end of this year, just to kind of break down each of the method and how you can apply it and all the data that I collected that will be in the book. But it really is more of that one-on-one. I've done corporate coaching as well, bringing these studies and the rituals or the tools. They have different names depending on what company I'm coaching, uh, how to apply this. Because the well-being, especially during COVID, brought a lot, brought about a lot of challenges mentally that people were dealing with. And they were making these life-changing decisions just because they, I think it put everything, COVID put everything in perspective. And so I, I was able to come in, have those conversations because the well-being is a big part of any organization at this point. Yeah, that, that makes so much sense. And I almost wonder if this is, you know, part of the secret sauce. It could be for the organization yourself or a combination of both. But is it that uh, ability and awareness, it seems like you have where you talked about, you know, being able to kind of, you know, I, I want to say marry the awareness, the, the science aspect, along with the actual things to simplify it so that people can understand it and be able to execute it. Do you think that your ability to be able to kind of see those, you know, separate things and bring it into something that people could kind of execute do you think that sets you apart and makes you unique i think so i mean i've done i don't know if everyone knows um gallup which is your strength finder so strategic you know strategy is my number two right so i know how to take anything and just simplify it because i think sometimes especially in today's world i mean think about how many things we're served with how many notifications we get and part of it is just like you feel just so inundated with all this information and versus simplifying the process. It's just, or some people are trying to make it more complex to make it sound like I'm the, I'm, you know, the it factor. And that's the reason I'm so special, but it really, anyone can do it. 
So I think, yeah, my, my strength is taking something that's very complex and simplifying the process so someone can do it. It's, it's for everyone. You know, I think the books, the resources, the articles, they're available to everyone. But I, I just feel like it's just become very complex depending who's telling the story or who's whoever is, you know, if they're, you know, I would say if they're more of a, you know, mathematician or, or, or scientist, I'm like, okay, I don't even know what words you use, but I'm going to go ahead and look for it. And I'm going to simplify this whole process. I'm like, really? You meant Apple? You, you could have just said Apple, right? <laughs> so it, it's just as simple as that. So yeah, I, I agree. I Everyone has gifts. I actually tell all my clients and even my employees that we do the strength finder. And it is great because if you can just really focus on your strengths. So part of finding your purpose is knowing your strengths and it guides you. It gives you your top, I say top five. You can buy the whole, it's, a, it's 34 talents that they give you no one. And automatically as human beings were gravitating to number 34 and debating that that's not true, that no, I'm not that. However, you should be focusing on your top five yeah, that makes so much sense. And it almost feels like um, that's the CEO hack that, you know, you feel like makes you more effective and efficient. And I, and I appreciate you drilling out more because, you know, I, I see it I see it less so much as legs of a stool now to like tools in a toolbox where, you know, you have those opportunities. If you only have five minutes, like you mentioned, you can pull that tool out and be able to use and execute on that to, to make sure that you, you know, start your day and, and you start your week or whatever off on the right foot. Yeah. I mean, you have to have tough conversations with your employees or your vendors or whoever that you're, or your clients. And um, one of the things you don't want to come across as a jerk, right? So it's just like, you want to be able to be straightforward, address the facts. How do you address it? And I find myself doing that a lot. Like, I'm like, all right, how am I supposed to address this? I usually have a journal, which I do have a free journal on my website as well. Uh, so they can go, I mean, I really journaling is really important, just your thoughts, because I when you internalize a lot of that emotions, it, it just, you may, you may not even know how to deal with it and may have come across in different factors. Like I see people just like, you know, cursing someone out for no reason. I'm like, all right, something's wrong. I don't know which part of your life, but in that isolated space where you're able to journal your thoughts or emotions and just really feel yourself through and how you're feeling, um, it brings up things like, where are these emotions coming from? This person triggered, you know, something in me. I feel disrespected. Why do I feel disrespected? So you start in asking yourself empowering questions because you're as a leader, you don't want to start your day at cranky, you know, your employees, your clients, everyone is counting on you to lead the team. So you have to lead by example and you can't lead by example. If you wake up with no, you know, with, with no clear plan on, on how that day looks like for you, what success looks like for you and your team this week or that day. Absolutely. So would you consider that to be what I like to call a CEO nugget? That could be a little bit more word of wisdom or piece of advice. Um, I usually say it might be something that might be in your previous book, your upcoming book, or something you might tell your younger business self. Basically creating consistency in your life. And I don't have a quote right now, but I would tell you that for me with this world that seems to be changing it up, your algorithm on social media, you know, YouTube is this finding out if we're talking about running your business, it really is finding out your niche and staying consistent with it and not making sure that you're not constantly following the trend because that will make you inconsistent. You jump, you were, you became very consistent and okay, I learned that in LinkedIn, I should be posting once a week. And this is, you know, the content that I should be posting. However, now you get another article or something else, someone else saying, Oh, TikTok is where is that, you know? So this is where I say my nugget is be very clear about what you're trying to accomplish and knowing your niche and staying consistent because if you jump around, you're just going to get frustrated and not really accomplish anything and lose your audience along the way. So in a world that can be very noisy and telling you this is the way, this is the way I have a book or have a program, I have this, I have that, figure out what it is that you are doing, the audience that you want to go after or the audience that you're in and just stay there no matter what's happening, stay there. Very powerful. So um, I was asking you now my absolute favorite question, which is the definition of what it means to be a CEO. We're all to have different quote unquote CEOs on this show. So Angelina, what does being a CEO mean oh, to you? Oh man. Okay. So for me, I think a CEO, it, it really is about being multidimensional for me uh, because I don't, I don't 
the way that I'm driven, the way that I think, I feel like I, I touch all aspects of every business. Not just she fixes crowns. I also touch it at my broad, the broadcasting company I work for, for the stages that I'm on. And what I think my sole purpose to me, my CEO is making, you know, maximizing God-given talents. So when I see someone that is emotionally stuck or feel that they don't have any purpose, I feel like I have been called, that's my CEO role, to step in and really shift that energy so they can see their God-given gifts, so they can live the remainder of their life in their purpose. Angelina, truly appreciate that definition. And of course, I appreciate your time even more. So what I want to do now is pass you the mic, so to speak, just to see if there's anything additional that you can let our readers and listeners know. And of course, how best people can get hold of you, get a copy of your books, your forthcoming book, and find out about all the awesome things that you're working on. Absolutely. No. Well, thank you for having me. I hope that the five by five success habits is something that they would apply right away. Um, if you want to learn more, you can go into my website, She Fixes Crowns. At, uh, I don't know if you will have it anywhere in the screen so they can see it. Perfect. Um, and also check me out on Instagram or Facebook is, again, She Fixes Crowns. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we'll definitely be eagerly awaiting, you know, that launch and, you know, all the awesome things. Just like Angelina spoke about, we will have the links and information in the show notes as well, too, so that everybody can get a copy of the book, follow up follow you and find out about all the awesome things that you're working on. You have a phenomenal rest of the day. All right. You too. Thank you for listening to the I am CEO podcast powered by CB nation and blue 16 media. Tune in next time and visit us at I am CEO.co. I am CEO is not just a phrase. It's a community. Get your driven CEO gear at CEO gear.co. Don't forget to schedule your complimentary digital marketing consultation at blue16media.com. This has been the I Am CEO Podcast with Gresham Harkless Jr. Thank you for listening.